everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. In this episode, we're gonna turn this electric bike into a beach fishing expedition bike with a cooler rack, tackle box rack, and of course, some rod holders. This is a half sco electric bike, and a couple of episodes ago, I did a full unboxing, an assembly, and a quick test and review on this bike. And since then, I've really been having a lot of fun just buzzing around here in the neighborhood. But now, I want to take it to the beach. And we're going to have to make some modifications. So stick around. Let's get started with the front cargo rack. You can see it's kind of like a shallow basket. And it's made from some pretty thick aluminum tubing, so it makes it light and pretty rigid. The installation is straightforward. They're already pre-drilled and pre-tapped holes where this thing gets bolted on. I just need to take off the screws that are set in there from the factory and replace them with the longer screws that come with the basket. It's a quick and simple process, and I'm going to add a little bit of this thread locking stuff just to keep it from coming loose with any kind of vibration. So I just snug it down and we're ready to rock. Let's move on to the back cargo rack. This thing's made about the same way. It's got some pretty heavy aluminum tubing that's welded at the ends and lots of cross bracing. It straddles the top of the rear tire and it goes on the same way with pre-drilled and pre-tapped mounting points. And just like before, I replace the small bolts with the larger bolts that come with it and put a little, well, a little too much of that thread lock fluid. And then I snug it all down. And there you go. This thing ain't going anywhere. I think maybe I'll use this for uh, the cooler, the front one for maybe a bait bucket, and maybe my cast net. And then we'll attach the rod holders to this thing, I think. All right, before I could do anything else, I had to go out and get a bunch of hardware because I want to be able to mount these things. And to be able to mount these rod holders, I got to make some rod holder clamps of some kind. So I've got this one inch by 16th of an inch by about 24 inches of scrap aluminum and hopefully that'll do it. But before I even do that, I want to make sure that the cooler isn't going to get in the way of having the rod holders mounted right here on the rail of this back rack. But there's another intermediate rail here that it'll fit on too, and I'm wondering if that will be better or if that'll be a little too close and a little tougher to actually get this thing strapped down. So I think I will go with the back mounting and I'll mount it probably right as high as I can put it on this rod. All right, so I've got this random piece. This is uh, right at six and a quarter inches long, but this is kind of an experimental fabrication. So I don't know exactly how long it's gonna be. So what I did was mark the center and then I'm gonna go ahead and bend it around this half inch J bolt. This will work perfect. It's slightly smaller than the, the tube of that rack. This way I know when I tighten it down, it'll pinch down on it. So what I'm gonna do is just bend it around the shank of this bolt and try to keep the bend centered on my center mark. And this stuff is pretty easy to bend. And that makes for a nice round bend. Now I can see how much I need to cut off to be able to drill a hole and mount it through the mounting hole on the rod holder. And then I'll measure what I cut off. I'll subtract that from the original size. And this way I know how long to cut the next three. So if you're wondering where I got this aluminum, you can certainly buy this stuff online, but this is actually scrap left over from when I did my rowboat to a bass boat conversion where I cut all the aluminum seats out of that boat, kept it around just in case I needed it. And in fact, I've got this thing out here sitting on a little modified trailer so I could get it up out of the lake and it needs a bunch of work on the deck and a bunch of work on the electricals and I'll be doing that on a video coming really soon so stick around for that if you're interested in aluminum boat DIY stuff. All right, that bend fits really well around the tube. Looks like it's gonna have a good grip. I'm gonna be using that hole and that flat spot to run a screw through it. So what I'll do is I'll just set this thing where I think it needs to go, and then I'll use a pencil and mark my spot for, to drill the hole. Now I'll just realign the little mark I made with the hole and make a, a mark for length, and I'll cut both these legs at the same length. <laughs> I got the hole drilled and all I got to do now is clean it up on the belt sander. All right, there we go. They're all done. 
The next step, I'm gonna put a little bit of tape around the, the rack frame just to protect it from getting too scratched up and that'll protect it from getting corroded. Let's make sure they're in the right position. Then I'm gonna squeeze them down so I'm sure that the bolt will go through. And believe it or not, this is the hard part, getting the bolt all the way through without falling off my screwdriver, like, like that. I've gotta use these little hemostats to get the bolt in there. Uh, this is gonna take a while. All right. All right, and then it's just a matter of snugging down the nuts. And I've got some locking nuts on here so I don't have to worry about anything coming loose with the vibration. That's got it. It's nice and firm. It's not going anywhere. It looks kind of good. Just need to put a rod in it to see what it looks like. All right, let's see how this is gonna work. That looks really good. It's clear of everything. I can put whatever I want on here. I could probably turn this thing sideways if I want to. So as I was trying to work out how I'm gonna carry everything I wanna carry, my plan was to put my tackle box right there because it fits perfect. The problem is I still need to find a place for a little bait bucket and my cast net, which I could probably consolidate those two. But I also wanna bring along this folding cooler in case I wanna bring some fish home. So I gotta do something else about a tackle box. So to solve the problem, I got myself this. Check it out. This is a backpack by Three Pigeons. And I just thought this thing looked so solid and almost military grade. I thought I could use it with this and anytime I go out on the lake, here at my own lake. This way I don't have to carry a tackle bag over my shoulder along with a drink and a couple of rods. I can just carry everything that I really need on my back. Let's take a look at the features. This is my first time opening it. I'm not exaggerating about the grade of the material. It's really heavy canvas. There's a cinching strap right here so you can pull everything nice and tight and close to you if you don't have a whole lot in there. Check it out, we get separate bags for holding gear. So we can put tools or a small box in here. Even this is like heavy duty. And the zippers feel super good. And you got a compartment separator. These are nice. You can really keep everything separate. You get four of these separate containers. Got another compartment forward. It actually adjoins to the main compartment or you can completely separate them and have a small compartment up front and the large one in the back. But if you need a lot of space, you can always combine these two. That's kind of neat. And then another zipper here with a shallow compartment and lots of pockets so you can organize your tools. I imagine I'll be putting my fishing pliers, a knife, a leatherman, and then you got a small pouch here for maybe my, my fish weighing scale will go in there. And the last compartment on the front is this, and this opens up completely. That's kind of cool. It's got an internal bag and then what looks like to be a bag that a, a hook can't get into with this mylar stuff on it. And more organizers. This is really a lot more than I bargained for, to be honest with you. They really thought about versatility here. So you can open this side pouch and use it as a side entry so you can slide in boxes this way and not have to pull them out from the top. That is really cool. I like that. I think I'll be using that. And then on the other side, you have a similar zippered compartment, but this one is really just a compartment. You've got an internal one and one on the outside of it. And all the zippers are really heavy duty and they have heavy duty parachute cords as pools. Now, truth be told, this isn't really designed specifically to be a fishing backpack. It's a tactical backpack. It's really meant for packing out, even for camping, for carrying gear, like if you're into shooting or if you're into photography, this is really good. It's got a lot of cushioning. So you could carry uh, camera bodies and lenses and a drone or whatever, and it'd be pretty safe in this. But I knew that since it has some real versatility in the pocket that I could make it work for fishing. And I wanted something that was a little heavier duty than the typical fishing backpacks that I'm, I was seeing online and in the stores. Plus I wanna be able to convert this into a camping and hiking backpack 
whenever I need it. So this is much more than I expected. I have to give this thing two thumbs up. Quality of the material and the manufacturer and all the little items, I'm really impressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and contact these folks, Three Pigeons, and see if they're willing to give us a discount code for the folks who watch the channel. Either way, if I don't get one, I'll go ahead and put the link to this in the description anyway. So be sure to look in the description and see what I got. All right, so the rest of the arrangement will have to wait till I'm actually on the beach so I can give you a quick tour of how I stowed everything. But let me get finished, and then the next thing you're gonna see is me on a Florida beach somewhere looking for fish. Heck, I could use this thing as a carry-on on a plane. All right, I kind of underestimated the amount of wind there'd be here today. There's a guy uh, kiteboarding. But we're gonna stop right here on the inside and try to cast some, for some bait. Maybe we can get some live mullet. sand pretty nice. Okay. Got some people fishing already. Let's see if there's any uh, little fish caught in this tidal pool. Nice thing about this time of year is that while the wind gets kind of chilly, the water stays warm for another month or so. Or at least warm enough that it doesn't freeze you. This is what people call finger mullet because it's about the size of your finger and they're perfect bait. All right, that should do us for a while. Disaster, the bottom of my bucket fell out. I guess I'm gonna have to like just use these guys as uh, cut bait. All right, I'm gonna try to hurry get to the beach and I'll just hang that thing off the side of the bike. plan is to cast into this mess it's it's good and deep but the tide is ripping out so fast I'm not sure how well I'll be able to fish it but I'm gonna go ahead and use the bike as my rod holder stand and I don't have to put anything in the sand so I can just cast the bait out and then stick that in there and I can watch it from a distance this guy's got a little life left in him time we're going to use that steel jig I made that has the uh, sponge that absorbs the gulp juice. All we do is just squeeze this stuff in and that should do it. All right I'm not very hopeful about this today because the current is just absolutely ripping but uh, let's give it a shot. And I'm just gonna let it sink, twitch it up and I won't be able to let it go too long because I'll probably snag my other line. I decided to move up current a bit. This current is impossible. We're gonna have to move, I think. If this looks so good, I wish the, uh, the, the tide would just slow down, but we've been having these really absurd extreme tides here, even along the edge. The tide is just ripping. 
It's just holding that jig up. All right, I just snapped off because this thing hung up on some logs or something out there. There's a bunch of junk in the middle. So let's uh, let's pick up and move uh, down the beach and see if maybe we can cast into the surf. We might be able to find a nice rip and fish that for a while. I knew when I started out making this video that it was probably not going to be a really good fishing day, but I knew it was going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's, let's give this a try for a few minutes. Try. I'm just gonna keep casting until this weather gets worse. We'll probably get forced to go home. This is a good spot that it's protected by the, um, the surf right there. There's a sandbar out there where the birds are actually feasting on something and it kind of stretches pretty far north so this is kind of like a little kind of a oversized tidal pool and so there's not much current in here the question is is there much of uh, anything living in here there's, well there's a school of something out there right where i cast i don't know if it's bait or something chasing bait but at least it's a sign of life yeah, I think it's time to go. The wind has really picked up and it's blowing out of the north. So the longshore current is really moving north to south and really hard to keep any bait anywhere. And I think we might even see some rain. So I'm out of here. Fixed up. I want to get a picture of your bike. Okay. My buddy just got an electric bike and he's fixing it up to carry his surf rods. This was the third guy who stopped me to take pictures of the bike. I think the whole idea of using an e-bike on the beach to get you around for fishing is just an idea that's ready to really explode. I can only imagine the kind of modifications that these kind of guys would do to a bike like this. How's it doing on the beach? Really nice. Surprising. I mean, I, I've been in, in the really loose stuff and it's hanging in. It hasn't thrown me yet. Yeah, well, man. <laughs> I'll check them out, man. I'll check it out. All right. That's cool. Well, take care. Good meeting you, man. Thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Well, I had like three people stop me to take pictures of the bike. It was fun. It was nice to be on the beach finally. And it's actually just fun to ride that bike. It handles the sand really well. It didn't throw me once, although I got loose a couple of times. Unfortunately, we didn't catch anything but bait. Beach fishing is really not my strength. So hopefully we'll get out on the Gulf of Mexico and tear them up on some video coming soon, I hope. In the meantime, I'll put whatever links and uh, discount codes I have for the bike and the backpack and all that stuff, just in case anybody's interested. And I've got an idea for next week to make an old lure I lost a long time ago. All right, stay tuned for that, and I'll see all y'all next Friday.